Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos and this is my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference ahead of our second pre-season game um, against uh, Leeds United uh, tomorrow, I think it is um, a 12 o'clock uh, kick-off um, and all that, uh, so I did say, you know, Manchester United, um, I've got a busy uh, pre-season um, ahead, obviously, you know, we got off to a great start um, against uh, Perth Glory um, at the weekend, you know, winning uh, by two goals uh, to nil, obviously, you know, Rashford getting his name on the score sheet and of course, uh, Jimmy Garner uh, getting um, his name on the score sheet, you know, was enough, you know, to give us a victory um, against uh, Perth Glory, but like I did say, we've got a busy is pre-season ahead, you know, we've got Leeds coming up tomorrow, then I do believe, you know, we do travel uh, to Singapore, and I think we play uh, Inter Milan, I think, then we play Tottenham, and I think we also play Christian Sund, and then I think um, our last game of pre-season um, is AC Milan, so, you know, we have got a busy uh, pre-season um, ahead of us um, and all that, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has given, given us um, a bit of uh, team news, you know, um, in his current uh, press conference uh, today, um, he's reportedly said, you know, everyone, you know, did uh, train uh, yesterday, so not, you know, no one missed uh, training as he has uh, confirmed, um, I think he did say it's 24 outfield uh, players uh, plus uh, keepers uh, that have uh, currently uh, trained. Um, he has said as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that Lee, he said Lee Grant um, is not fit. Um, he has given us an update um, on Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw did uh, was uh, training uh, yesterday but I think with Luke Shaw, you know, Solskjaer said about Luke Shaw he may not risk uh, Luke Shaw. He did sustain a hamstring injury at the weekend um, against Perth Glow and he had been assessed um, in the last uh, couple of days but it has been revealed that his injury um, is not uh, too uh, severe but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, may not risk Luke Shaw. Uh, I think he's confirmed that Eric Bay, Victor Lindelof and Romelu Lukaku who all M3, you know, did uh, miss uh, the first game um, against, uh, you know, Perth Glory, are going to be uh, fit uh, to play. So Lukaku should be involved, Eric Bay should be involved, and of course, uh, Vitz Lindelof um, and that, you know, should be um, involved. He's also given us an update um, in regards uh, to David De Gea as well. Um, he said that David De Gea, you know, now should be uh, signing um, a new contract. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has indicated out that he's confident that David De Gea will uh, sign um, a new deal. Um, also, David De Gea did not play um, against uh, Perth Glory. Um, he was um, an unused uh, substitute, but he has confirmed that he should be signing a new deal and he's also confirmed that David De Gea you know, will be uh, playing uh, tomorrow uh, Manchester United um, are set to give David De Gea a new five year deal a new five year deal uh, worth around 350 grand a week obviously you know, this will make him the highest paid goalkeeper um, in world football and he'll get around £150,000 pay rise uh, from what he's uh, currently on at the moment on his current deal because he's on about 200 grand a week at the moment um, on his uh, current uh, deal but David De Gea um, is now you know, set to uh, stay um, at the football club you know, which is very very good news and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer know, knows um, how imperative you know, David De Gea is. Um, obviously, he's been a long serving here. You know, he has been here eight years. Obviously, he has made over 300 other appearances um, in all competitions. You know, for the for the majority of the summer, you know, he has been you know, relentlessly linked to a move away uh, from Old Trafford because at one point it was looking like Lee was not, you know, making any progressions in, you know, negotiations over getting him um, a new contract. But it actually reported about this the other week saying that they had been breakthrough in negotiations between George Mendes and uh, David, uh, George Mendes and the club um, and all that, which obviously George Mendes um, is David De Gea's um, agent. But he's set to sign a new five year deal worth around 350 grand a week and I think that equates to around 9 to 1 million pounds um, over the five years so this is a very very um, good news like I said but you know David De Gea was linked with a 60 million move to PSG also Real Madrid have been long admirers of him obviously Real Madrid were on the brink of getting him back in 2015 but due to the fax machine of course uh, the deal uh, never uh, materialised um I think also, you know, Juventus are winning there for him. But I think reflecting on David De Gea's um, impressive, perform impressive performances, you know, um, you know, he's won the club's player of the year, like, what, four times out of the last six years. Didn't really do well uh, last season. He was making quite a few mistakes towards uh, the back end um, of last season. I think it was mainly to do with a contractual situation. But we have been in talks of getting David De Gea a new contract for, what, the last 18 um, or 19 months. He allegedly said, you know, we had around 300 grand a week for him um, on the table um, at the turn um, of the year. But now there has been progression um, in negotiations. Yeah, still think Man United are in talks of getting him a new contract contract but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did say in his press conference um he did say, you know, it's up to David and the club, you know, when to announce it, um, if and when, um, and all that, you know, when the contract term is fully um, announced. To it. So, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has indicated out that David De Gea um, is on the brink um, of signing um, a new contract. So, this is a uh, very, very um, good news. So, like I said, it, Eric Bay, Lindelof and Lukaku, you know, should be playing um, in this game against Leeds United. Uh, we're not too sure about uh, Luke Shaw um, at the moment um, and all that, so he may not risk uh, Luke Shaw, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has confirmed. Um, obviously, he also said as well, Solskjaer, you know, basically, you know, don't need to sell players. He's, he's, he's very adamant that we have haven't received um, any bids uh, for um, our players, but Solskjaer has also said, you know, we don't need to um, overspend um, on our uh, current uh, transfer uh, targets. But Solskjaer's direct message is basically saying that, you know, there has been a lot of speculation. I mean, there has been a lot of speculation about, you know, um, players coming in and, of course, uh, players are going out um, and uh, coming out um, and all that. Uh, but I do believe we need to sell players this summer, you know, to help us generate funds and, of course, uh, rebuild uh, the squad. Um, obviously, so far this summer, you know, we have got two players on the board. You know, we spent around £65 million on Daniel James and Nan Wan Bissaka. 
striker. And I do believe both them players, you know, can, you know, I've got all the ingredients required uh, to become a uh, huge successes um, at Manchester United um, and did well on their debut um, at the weekend um, against uh, Perth uh, Glory. So I do believe, you know, they can exceed um, expectation levels at Manchester United. And they're both young, you know, they're only 21 years of age. Obviously, that it's beneficial anyway because they've already had experience ever playing them um, in England. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, wants to recruit uh, young players uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer, as he has, you know, currently uh, confirmed. But we need more, you know, the Nang Wan Bissaka and all that. We need to build on that. And I think we've got to bring at least, what, two or three more new additions to the squad. I do believe we need an experienced centre half. I do believe now our top priority is to get a central defender in. And I think we also need um, a couple of new additions in that midfield. You know, we also need a right winner. And he was asked in his press conference about transfers um, and all that. You know, he was asked about the speculation about Harry Maguire because I think it's looking very likely, you know, he probably he could be um, our third uh, signing uh, this summer, you know, which is uh, very, very um, good news. But yeah, very, very good press conference um, and all that. Um, but like I said, Manchester United leads. Like I said, this is going to be the first meeting, you know, between Manchester United um, and Leeds United, you know, since uh, 2011, which was around, was it eight years ago now or something um, like that? Uh, we actually did beat them uh, by three goals to nil back in 2011. This was in the League Cup. I think Owen scored twice and I think Giggs uh, got one goal. Obviously, you know, in 2010, Leeds did beat us uh, by one goal to nil. Uh, Jermaine Bedford currently uh, scored um, in that game. And the last time we did play them um, in the Premier League, I think it was back like in, what, 2004? Was it a 1-1 draw between Manchester United and Leeds? So obviously, you know, Leeds United have not uh, been in the you know been in the Premier League for like, what, 15 um, or 16 years now um, and all that. Um, obviously, Mar Marcelo Bielsa, be, uh, how, do you, how do you pronounce his name? Marcelo Bielsa, I'd, I'd, I would believe he's further um, in, uh, up in his development uh, uh, with Leeds than you know, we are um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, and all that. Um, obviously, no, Leeds did get to the players, but I think they'd uh, been uh, knocked out uh, by Derby uh, last season um, and all that. Um, obviously, no, uh, the, I think this is the 110th meeting you know, between Manchester United um, and Leeds. This is the 110th meeting. You know, they've, they've played each other 109 times. I think we've won, what, 47? Leeds have won 27. And of course, uh, there has been 35 uh, draws uh, between uh, the two teams um, and all that. So it is a rival, you know, uh, Manchester United um, and Leeds um, and all that. Um, but I thought Leeds were going to come up uh, last season, to be quite honest with you. But obviously, no, it didn't uh, currently uh, materialise them um, and all that. Um... But like I said, um, it's going to be a very, very good game. Like I said, I, I always like pre-season anyway because... Um you know the young, you know the, the upcoming players. You know do get given the chance um, and all that. You know the upcoming players to get a bit of experience um, under their belt. And I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will give them all the uh, the chances. You know Mason Greenwood has been assured more playing time going on into this season. You know Chong. I thought Chong was very impressive against Perth Glory. You know Angel Gomez. I thought was very impressive against Perth Glory. Um, you know, we've got Diego Dalla, he's the upcoming future um, and all that. You know, you've got Jimmy Garner. So we have got quite um, a few um, upcoming uh, players. You know, we've got McTominay. And the good thing about McTominay is I know he's a bit inexperienced at the moment, but I think in throughout these pre-season games, I think McTominay, you know, is going to get a bit of more um, experience um, under his belt. And I think he's going to get more game time, you know, going on um, into this season, you know, which is uh, very, very good. You know, we've got Andres Pereira. He's going to gain more, a bit more um, of experience. But they did uh, play quite a few games towards the back end of last season. You know, they uh, did, uh, you know, McTominay and Pereira, you know, reflecting on the, you know, the amount of injuries we had sustained uh, last season because obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had to rotate um, our midfield uh, last season um, and all that but I always do like uh, pre-season because like I said the young players uh, get given uh, the chance um, and all that um but like I said, I think Leeds, uh, Leeds themselves have played two games um, at the moment. They've won two out of two. Uh, they've played two preseason games and they've won both of them. I think they did beat, uh, what, York 5-0. And I think they recently you know, beat uh, Geisler uh, by uh, two goals uh, to one uh, and all that. I um, want to give you an update on Fred, Damien and Dean Henderson. Um, I think they're set to uh, link up with, uh, uh, with the rest of the Manchester United squad um, in Singapore because obviously you know, Fred and Damien um, obviously you know, didn't travel to Australia you know, due to her family reasons. I think actually you know, Fred um, had, been, had got married. Uh, with Damien, I'm not too sure, but I think he's something to do with family reasons. And of course, Dean Henderson um, hasn't come to Australia, so obviously all them um, are expected to come, you know, with the rest of the squad. You know, when we do, you know, currently uh, go uh, to Singapore um, and all that. Um, but um, yeah, so that's uh, mainly um, everything to update on that. So that's what you know some of the things you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, has currently uh, said in um, his uh, press conference. So we'll give you the latest news um, in regards uh, to Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester. Now we do know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has identified him um, as his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target. Now I do believe we can get a transfer prioritised for Harry Maguire. I think we are willing to uh, sell uh, one of our, um, our centre backs, and it also uh, got mentioned in the press conference about Victor Lindelof saying that he'd recently been linked to a move to Barcelona. I think he had he has dismissed speculations um, as Victor Lindelof um, and all that so I think he has basically you know, ruled out um, a move uh, to Barcelona um, and all that because he did say I think the other week that you know he was actually you know, uh, supposedly you know, linked to a move uh, to Barcelona 
But like I did say with Harry Maguire, yeah, so without Solskjaer's identified him as his number one uh, defensive target. But like I said, uh, we're willing to offload one of our centre backs. So like I said, it won't be Victor Lindelof, but we could offload Marcus Rojo. And I think we need to get rid of Rojo anyway because he's enjoyed a very difficult time at Manchester United. Uh, you know, we could it could be Smalling, it could be Jones, it could be Alex Tuan Zebiem and all that. Who we could offload, you know, you know, to, if we do get a Medela, you know, or uh, finalised uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire and all that. But as I did update you yesterday, reports uh, were coming out saying that. Uh, Harry Maguire, this was coming from Sky Sports, has uh, told uh, Leicester, he has told Leicester, and he's told Brendan Rodgers and his Leicester teammates that he does currently yeah, want uh, to leave uh, Leicester. And Leicester said they'll let Harry Maguire join Manchester United or Manchester City as long as, you know, us or City are willing to uh, pay him a world record fee for him. So I do believe Leicester want um, at least around £80 million. Pounds. Well, it, it's being quoted out that they want from between £80 uh, to £90 million. Pounds, but I do believe the value, Leicester's valuation seems to be the stumbling block at the moment because reportedly Manchester United are not willing to pay, you know, what Leicester, um, of course, um, are uh, demanding. Um, obviously, you know, we have held several talks so with Leicester, obviously, you know, I think yesterday we was we, we was uh, negotiating a fee uh, with Leicester um, over coming to an agreement on a fee, you know, for Harry Maguire. Uh, reportedly, you know, we want to try and get him from, from between seventy to seventy-five million pounds. But obviously, you know, Leicester um, have said, you know, they want um, at least uh, eighty million pounds um, and all that. Reports did reflect out over the weekend saying that we allegedly um, agreed a world record fee of eighty million pounds with Leicester, and it reportedly said, you know, we we will uh, pay sixty million up front uh, with twenty million um, in add-ons, which does which does potentially, you know, arise. Um, up to uh, 80 million pounds um, and all that um but uh, and it also said you know he was uh, due his Manchester United medical um, on Monday. You know this is what it uh, basically has uh, said. But obviously you know them reports obviously you know didn't uh, come true um, and all that. I think this is actually you know stemming uh, from Duncan Castles. So I do I do believe you know no fee um, has yet you know come to um, an agreement. But like I said I do believe the valuation seems to be the stumbling block um, at the moment. Um, obviously it did say on Saturday that you know Harry Maguire you know was uh, frustrated uh, with Leicester. Uh, you know blocking him um, his proposed move to Manchester United um, or Manchester City. But it is Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that are battling it out. Uh, for them um, his services obviously you know Sky Sports reported out the other week saying that you know we'd put a 70 million pound bid in for Harry Maguire obviously you know uh, Leicester City um, had currently uh, turned uh, this down because this is too insufficient for Leicester because like I said you know they're looking for somewhere um, in the region of uh, 80 million pounds so we had the 70 million pound bid uh, turned down uh, for the player but I like Harry Maguire um, a lot and I don't think you know we've had a, a, a defence to rebuild on you know since we had the likes of Evra you know Ferdinand Vidic Gary Neville you know since then you know we haven't had, had, really had a defence you know to currently uh, rebuild on um, and all that, and I do believe Harry Maguire you know, would be the right uh, solution for Manchester United. I'd say in this market, this day and age, probably £70 million pounds is reasonable, but I'd say over the £70 million pound mark, Leicester um, are basically you know, asking her for too much. Obviously, if we're willing to pay what Leicester are demanding, obviously it's going to make him the most expensive defender um, in world football, um, ahead of uh, Liverpool's uh, Virgil van Dijk, who of course Liverpool paid £75 million pounds for back in January you know, 2018 um, and all that, and obviously you can't, you can't put Harry Maguire in Virgil van Dijk's calibre um, or level because I do believe Virgil van Dijk is regarded is um, well, regarded as one of the best central defenders in the world. I'd say he's uh, the best uh, central uh, defender um, in the world. I hate to say that because I am a Manchester United fan, but I'm obviously you not know, just giving you uh, my honest um, opinions. But we have it back a couple of weeks ago. You know, it was looking likely you know, Manchester City were going to get a deal um, over the line for Harry Maguire. And I do believe Harry Maguire's preference uh, was um, actually you not know, to uh, make a move uh, to Manchester City. You know, it did say City were willing to you know pay him around 280 grand a week. It's obviously said City you know were set to get him for a world record fee of around what. Um, you know, eighty eight million pounds, but obviously you no know, city had withdraw their withdrew their interest because obviously you no know, city um, are not willing to meet uh, what Leicester of course um, are demanding, and obviously you no know, Manchester City were were seeing Harry Maguire as a replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company. But looking at ultimately, you know, Leicester don't want to sell Harry Maguire. This is the main factor reason why they've priced him out of the market. This is why, of course, uh, they are uh, demanding um, an extortionate um, amount. Reports did come out a couple of weeks ago saying that Leicester have um, allegedly um, agreed. Uh, they've come to an agreement. Uh, they've allegedly come to an agreement with Brighton, and it reportedly said they've. Agreed a £45 million pound deal for, for Lewis Dunker from Brighton. And obviously, you no know, Leicester um, are seeing him um, as a replacement uh, for Harry Maguire. But Harry Maguire is a really, really good player. And I do believe that central defensive area is one of the pivotal areas where Manchester United, of course, uh, need to uh, strengthen up. Because, like I said, we haven't had a world class central defender since we had the likes of Vidic. And, of course, uh, since uh, we had uh, the likes um, of Ferdinand um, and all that. Um, but yeah, we've got to address our uh, de deficiencies defensively because obviously reflecting back last season, we conceded 54 goals um, in the Premier League last season in 38 Premier 
Premier League games. Obviously, that's our highest total um, of course, I mean, 48 years. So that just indicates how, you know, the issues we've got defensively. You know, some people um, have actually said that um, uh, the, the midfield and they're at that right wing is actually, they're more priorities uh, than a central uh, defender um, and all that. I don't, you know, currently um, agree uh, with that. Um, but Harry Maguire, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution. You know, his, his work ethic's good. He's really, really good in the air. He, show, he holds his line really, really well. You know, I don't think he's very fast, Harry Maguire, but I don't think, you know, that's uh, currently um, an issue. You know, he's still 26 years of age. Um, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, um, uh, you know, wants to go for young players um, and all that. You know, he's plus um, he's British, and like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit uh, British uh, talents uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer and Premier League proven, like I said, and that's very beneficial. But you know, I think Harry Maguire, you know, would blend in alongside Victor Lindelof um, in our backline fantastically well because with Victor Lindelof, I know how much of an imperative player he is because I think he's going to grow, develop, and flourish in this Manchester United team. Lindelof's been at the club what two seasons? You know, it was, there was vast improvements in his game in his second season. With Victor Lindelof didn't really play well in his first season, didn't really settle in. That's consistency, but. I think Lindelof, you know, really stepped up to the plate um, in his uh, second uh, season uh, with Manchester United um, and all that. So I do believe we need at least one central defender. You know, some people have said, you know, we need, uh, you know, two uh, central defenders um, and all that. Because obviously, like, this morning isn't good enough. Obviously, you know, Phil Jones um, and that um, isn't good enough anymore. And they have been uh, two uh, long-serving uh, uh, players um, at the club. Um, you know, some people say we've still got Eric Bay. I think Eric Bay, you know, is going to be, like I said, he's going to be involved tomorrow. With Eric Bay, I think his Manchester United career has been badly affected. You know, the amount of injuries he's sustained. Um, obviously, you know, his fallout um, under managers, I think it's had a really bad um, effect on uh, Eric Bay's uh, career. So we do need at least one central defender. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now has identified, you know, Harry Maguire um, as his number one uh, defensive uh, target. Um, but like I said, Leicester won a world record fee for him. He has been at Leicester a couple of seasons. You know, he has made 76 appearances in all competitions. Obviously, 69 of those appearances have come. Um, in the Premier League uh, for Leicester. He only signed a new long-term contract last summer, so he is under contract uh, with Leicester till 2023. Leicester did pay around £17 million for his services uh, from Hull City. And I think Mike Phelan um, has instructed Manchester United you know, to get a deal um, over the line for him because Mike Phelan's keen on reuniting with him. Obviously, you know, Mike Phelan had a short tenure with Hull and obviously you know, he managed uh, Harry uh, Maguire, so Harry Maguire has played under Mike Phelan's guidance. And I do believe Alex Ferguson you know, wants Manchester United, um, of course, uh, to sign uh, Harry uh, Maguire um, and all that. But like I said, he has been relentlessly you know, linked to a move to the club and obviously our priority last summer you know was to recommend um, a central uh, defending you know, to currently uh, come in um, but obviously you know last summer the board under the Jose Mourinho area the board went back in the sign is that Jose Mourinho you know wanted to recommend her to come in there to the club but one of the players Mourinho wanted of course uh, last summer was Harry Maguire but I do believe Leicester would demand the next Arsenal amount last summer I think they wanted around what 70 or uh, 75 uh, million pounds but of course uh, Manchester United uh, were reluctant you know to uh, currently uh, pay it um, and all that but Harry Maguire's told Leicester he wants to leave he's indicated how he wants to go to a big club you know to rejuvenate his career and of course uh, take um, his football in her career at the next uh, level but no fee has yet come to an agreement you know between Manchester United um, and Leicester um, and all that uh, but he allegedly said at the weekend that we've agreed uh, a world record fee of £80 million pounds. We, we pay £60 million up front you know with uh, £20 million, um, in add-ons but Leicester have said you know they want in the access of £80 million pounds, um, of course but you know I don't think Manchester United um, are willing to pay this Leicester did say actually they were convinced that Manchester United you know were going to pay you know what they're uh, currently demanding but we've made it clear anyway we're not willing to um, overspend on our transfer tax, you know, quite a few people said, look, you know, we should be a uh, sensible over our uh, current uh, recruitment uh, this summer. But like I said, we've spent £65 million uh, so far. So if we had to get Harry Maguire um, on the board, say for what, £80 million, pounds, um, That'll take our spending up to around what 145 or 155 million pounds uh, so far uh, this summer. But there is, uh, there is just under four weeks uh, remaining now of this transfer window. And I think we have now, you know, got to be uh, more competitive in this window. I do believe we need to sell players to help us generate funds and uh, rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that. Uh, we de I think we definitely you know, need to work in the uh, sell uh, players. Um, I think Damien um, needs to leave uh, the club um, and all that. Like I said, with Damien, he's not obviously you know, in Australia with us, but I think he needs to currently leave uh, the club, uh, does Damien, because he's enjoyed a um, very difficult time at Manchester United. You know, hasn't really been given the chance. So if we sell Diamond and Rojo, I believe, you know, we can generate around, what, 25 or 30, you know, you know 30 million pounds for their uh, current uh, departures. Uh, we do know Paul Pogba and Romelu Lukaku um, have been relentlessly, you know, linked to uh, move away from the club. But I do believe now both cl players could be set to stay at Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, reflecting on, you know, the huge, uh, the huge, you know, fees, you know, we have put um, on both uh, players because obviously Pogba and Lukaku are our two uh, most um, expensive signs. And I did say if we sell him, it will help us with our rebuilding process. You know, it will help us over our uh, transition um, and all that. Uh, even though we do know how uh, imperative you know uh, both players um, are um, and all that. Um 
But as I've been updating you, you know, about uh, Paul Pogba and all that, I think now he's going to be set to stay at Manchester United because he did say initially, you know, we wanted around them um, £150 million, you know, if we was currently uh, going to sell him. But more reports, um, um, well, more reports, um, you know, updated um, at the weekend saying that we have now risen our asking price and it reportedly said, you know, we want around um, £180 million now uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. And um, so basically, you know, we're demanding double than what we initially paid for Murphy from Juventus, you know, back in uh, 2016. But we've actually indicated out that Paul Pogba is not for sale, so we're very admin um, of course you know that Paul Pogba um, and that um, is not uh, for sale even though reports did reflect out um, over a month or so ago now saying that Paul Pogba wants a new challenge you know he publicly admitted that he wants to uh, leave uh, Manchester United for the very first time and he even did say he was even willing to go on striker to force a um, move away uh, from Manchester United I was also reading reports um, at the weekend uh, saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has, has uh, revealed that he's considered Paul Pogba for the captaincy you know, next season probably in a bid to convince him to remain at the football club um, you know it, um probably in a big you know to uh, convince him to remain um, at the football club uh, even though um uh, even though um Um, you know, despite um, his desire to quit uh, the club, he still says, uh, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is willing to give him the captaincy on a permanent basis, you know, going on into this season. I think Ashley Young um, is our uh, current uh, captain um, at the moment. But um, like I said, Paul Pobber's agent, Mini Raliola, he came out the other week and said Paul Pobber, you know, is in the process of leaving the football club. Um, obviously, you know, Paul, uh, Paul Pobber was absent from pre-season training the other week, so obviously, you know, that added more speculation um, in regards uh, to his uh, long-term uh, future. I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has held talks with Paul Pobber uh, in regards to his uh, long-term uh, future but like Solskjaer said in his first press conference you know he has spoken to the vast majority of um, our players uh, this summer um, and all that but I think regardless of what happens uh, with Paul Pogba you know, I still think it's in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plans you know to bring um, you know two uh, new um, additions um, in that current uh, midfield we do know Paul Pogba has been relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid he's also been uh, linked to a move uh, to Juventus but I do think for a long time that Paul Pogba's first choice preference has been Real Madrid and I do believe his likely destination um, of course um, has been uh, Real Madrid um, and all that but obviously you know, Real Madrid are not keen on a straight cash payment. We do know Real Madrid are desperate to include Gareth Bale in their pursuit um, of Paul Pogba um, and all that. I think Real Madrid have held negotiations with Manchester United um, over the sale um, of Paul Pogba. But obviously, you know, Zinedine Zidane's identified him as his number one target. Real Madrid so far this summer have signed five players and they have spent um, over uh, £300 million pounds, um, and all that. So they are not they are not keen um, on a straight cash payment. Obviously, Juventus had, been, had stepped their interest up at least in the last, what, two to three weeks. Um... But I think it did confirm on Friday of last week that uh, Pavel Nedved, the vice chairman of Juventus, um, had told Paul Pobber's agent, Mini Raleo, that Juventus are no longer in for him because it's in there. Well, it's their. Um, I think Juventus now are planning, you know, to get uh, to prioritise um, other uh, midfield uh, targets because, like I said, anyway, I don't think Juventus would be able to afford Paul Pobber. Um, right, that you know, reflecting on the substantial amount, you know, we have currently uh, put on him. So I think probably Juventus would have to offload a couple of their essential players to fund the move uh, for Paul Pobber. Juventus have obviously got Adrian Rabbit on the board. I think they're on the brink of getting delayed. They got Ronaldo last summer. Um... Uh, they got Aaron Ramsey um, and all that so like I said Juventus um, are doing a uh, good business uh, this summer and Juventus director you know recently said you know of how much Juventus love Paul Pogba because Paul Pogba did have four good years um, in Turin you know he hasn't really replicated this you know since he did uh, make uh, the return uh, to Manchester United um, obviously you know we paid uh, £89 million pounds in, but I still say in this market at this day and age and all that Paul Pogba is still within the region of 140 or £150 million pounds. but obviously this is a figure anywhere that both teams are not willing to meet I, I think and uh, now with his now price Tag, uh, asking price £180 million pounds, that will probably confirm that Paul probably you know, will be uh, remaining um, in the football club and I do believe it's initially in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plans you know, to actually you know, build them um, a side um, around uh, Paul Pogba but like I said maybe the club are main factor is why he wants to leave the club because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players and he feels as though he isn't playing amongst good enough players at Manchester United you know maybe he wants to be in Champions League football and I, I did say that's another key thing you know uh, it's going to be hard for us to attract players to elite level because we're not in Champions League football it's also going to be hard for us to convince our imperative players to stay at the football club and maybe you know Paul Pobber's frustrated with the lack of competitive so maybe these are the couple of reasons why he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, Paul Pobber's still under contract with the club till 2021 so he's got two years left in his deal with an option to extend it by a further year he is on around uh, 290 uh, grand um, a week but Paul Pobber's agent you know Mini Riley all has been in the process of finding Paul Pobber a new club at least for the last what uh, two uh, to three months um, and all that but his likely destination um, of course um, has been uh, Real Madrid and Real Madrid I think have held negotiations you know Juventus have held negotiations with Paul Pobbers, you know, Adrian, you know, Mini Air Raliola. Um but like I said, Paul Pobber and Romelu Lukaku's future futures, you know, still uh, remain um, uncertain um, and all that. 
But um, like I said, we have seen glimpses of Paul Pogba's best form. You know, we mainly saw it um, in that three-month period, you know, when Oligan and Solskjaer, you know, was the interim manager. And that's when we mainly uh, saw uh, the best term of Paul Pogba. And we mainly saw the best of Pogba when Ander Herrera was playing. So that just, you know, you know, in, that just proves um, how much of an impact, you know, Ander Herrera, um, of course, uh, made in that midfield because he freed up, you know, where uh, Paul Pogba and all that. And Paul Pogba was scoring goals. He was, he was providing, you know, he was creating uh, chances um, and all that. Um but like I did currently say, yes, yeah, so Paul Pogba, you know, has been uh, subjected uh, to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation um, and all that. Um, I think since he rejoined Manchester United in 2016, you know, he scored 31 goals in 135 games. Obviously, he's won the Europa League with us, the League Cup. Obviously, that came in his second season uh, with Manchester United. Paul Pogba's uh, transfer saga away from Manchester United, you know, was happening last year um, and all that because obviously uh, he had a bad relationship with Jose Mourinho. Obviously, there was talks about him going to Juventus last year. I think there was talks about him going to Barcelona in January. But obviously, you know, Paul Pogba had a bad relationship uh, with Jose Mourinho and Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes of course when Jose Mourinho of course uh, departed uh, the football club uh, but like I said it's still Real Madrid and Juventus of course that are battling out uh, for um, his current uh, services but now based on the extortion amount we've put on him this could now mean, um, mean um, he does uh, remain um, in the football club I know how much of an imperative player you know Paul Pogba is you know he's still 26 he's still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him I know he hasn't lived up to expectation levels at Manchester United as we all thought he would have done but you know um, I think you know he can you know be become a good player for Manchester United, you know, because we have seen glimpses of his best form, and we do know how Paul Popper can play, he can score goals, he can provide them, and all that. You know, he did really, really well in his four years there with Juventus. Um, but possibly now, you know, Paul Popper, you know, could be a remain name in the football club. And Oligner Solskjaer has talked a lot about Popper, you know, he's praised him, you know, he's praised Paul Popper, and you know, Oligner Solskjaer knows um, how much of an imperative player he's like. Reflecting back in his first press conference, he'd been bombarded with questions about Popper, he'd also been asked questions about, you know, what the quotes that Paul Popper's age, you know, Mini Riley you know, did come out with her the other week uh, but now we've said we want 180 million so basically now we've definitely priced him out of the market he also got a good assist um, at the weekend um, against uh, Perth Glory piece of brilliance from Paul Pobby you know, to uh, for uh, Marcus Rashford's um, open I think it was a back heel assist you know he'd uh, currently um, got um, but yeah that's the latest news about Paul Pobby but either way obviously if Paul Pobby does end up leaving the football club obviously you know we are going to need um, a current uh, replacement for him and there has been so many midfielders um, on our agenda but since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival obviously we saw Valencia lead the club after he served 10 years with Manchester United but obviously we got our replacement for Valencia uh, through um, Anwan Bissaka. We saw Ander Herrera leave on a free transfer. We also saw Fellaini you know, leave her back home in January. So we are going to need a replacement, uh, especially you know, for um, Ander um, Herrera. Want to give you a bit more additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sport in Lisbon now. Um, obviously, we do know he's been one of our priority targets, and for the entirety of the summer, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, has been uh, linked uh, with a move uh, to Manchester United. I think Bruno Fernandes um, has notified um, his representatives that he, you know, he wants to basically you know, join Manchester United, and reportedly he's turned down Tottenham. He's also turned down Liverpool. Tottenham and Liverpool, of course, have been in there for Bruno Fernandes, but I think we've been considered the favourite to sign Bruno Fernandes for the last, what, three to four weeks um, and all that. We We've been considered the favourites. Obviously, there's been several talks between Manchester United and Sport and Lisbon uh, for uh, several uh, weeks, like I said. Um, I was reading their reports uh, yesterday, like updated ones. Now, Bruno Fernandes' post move to Manchester United now could be um, off because I think uh, the board, the, base, the board, Manchester United board, uh, feels as though it's too expensive because I think Ed Woodward now has said no to Bruno Fernandes. And uh, reportedly, you know, man, we're, only, we're not willing to pay more than £50 million for a player that's not really got the um, experience uh, to, a, to the highest level. So, this is where the board, um, are, this is stemming from what the board um, have basically you know, mentioned um, and all that because obviously you know, Sporting has been wanting around £70 million we're only willing to pay around £50 million so I think the fee seems to be the stumbling block of Bruno Fernandes making his uh, move uh, to Manchester United um, and all that I do believe it says, you know, we've reached an agreement with Sport and Lisbon where we had reached an agreement with Sport and Lisbon and it reportedly said, you know, we've agreed the personal terms, we've agreed the contract with Bruno Fernandes, but obviously, you know, no fee um, has yet, you know, come to um, an agreement. So, like I said, the fee is actually, you know, the current uh, stumbling block. So, Sport and Lisbon have said, you know, they want £70 million. Manchester United, of course, um, are reluctant uh, to pay that. It did confirm a couple of weeks ago that Bruno Fernandes' agent, uh, I do believe, was um, in the UK to allegedly, you know, thrash out um, a deal uh, with Manchester United. I do believe Manchester United held more extensive talks with Sport and Lisbon last week. I do believe also Manchester City um, held their talks uh, with Sporting Lisbon last week because I do believe now you know City um, have revived uh, their interest because reflecting what's back six or seven weeks ago it was looking likely Manchester City were going to get a deal over the line for him so in this summer transfer window you know for the entirety of the summer window you know Sporting Lisbon haven't really you know been very reliable because um, they did say he was going to be going to Manchester City obviously you know he never he didn't end up making another move to Manchester City because obviously you know, that po uh, after that point you know of course uh, City um, had withdrew, withdrew uh, their interest um, and all that but I still believe 
Steve anyway, you know, Tottenham um, and Liverpool um, are in there uh, for Bruno uh, Fernandes, but he's um, a very, very um, good player. Um, I think he's told his representatives, well, he's had negotiations with his representatives um, over the potential uh, move uh, to Old Trafford um, and all that. But maybe with us, you know, if we do, you know, get a deal over the line for Harry Maguire, and we do, obviously we've got to pay an extortion amount fee, we've got to pay a world record fee. You know, could this have any bad effect on, you know, Bruno Fernandes, you know, making them his move uh, to Manchester United? So if we get Harry Maguire, we could actually, you know, possibly, you know, withdraw um, our interest um, in Bruno uh, Fernandes um, anywhere. Um, but I like uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes um, a lot. You know, he has been subject to a lot of transfer speculation. I think what the situation of what's going on with Paul Pub, I don't think that's got all to do, you know, with Bruno Fernandes coming to Manchester United. So I do believe Bruno Fernandes moved to Manchester United, of, of course. Um, he's not uh, dependent on what happens there uh, with Paul Pub. But, but Bruno Fernandes is a really, really good player. You know, he, if he comes to Manchester United, he'll rejuvenate the team, he'll score his goals. Uh, he'll rejuvenate the team, he'll score his goals. He can also create chances um, and all that. I know he hasn't really played to the highest level um, as yet, but I'm not, I haven't got a concern about that because I do believe Bruno Fernandes has got all the attributes to come and succeed in the Premier League I do believe um, you know he'll exceed um, expectation levels in the Premier League and it will rejuvenate his career you know he's been at Sporting there's been a couple of seasons um, obviously he scored I think what 31 goals in all competitions last season um, obviously you know he's, he signed a five year contract was it last summer until 2023 with Sporting Lisbon um, his initial release cost is around £88 million pounds, but obviously you know we are not determined to go anywhere near uh, that figure um, and all that and obviously he spent the majority of his career um, in Italy you know when he was younger uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes but but I do believe he's primarily attacking, a primarily attacking midfielder. Um, only had 24 uh, years of age. Um, but if Paul Pub was to leave the club, obviously would see Bruno Fernandes um, as the adequate uh, replacement uh, for him. But for the entirety of the summer, you know, he has been one of um, our priority uh, targets um, and all that. Um, but like it did, reports were coming out yesterday saying, you know, we were set to make an official £50 million pound bid uh, for uh, the player. But I believe this is this is going to be too insufficient for Sport and this being, you know, because they want around £70 million. If we did sell Paul Pobber, then Manchester United probably would be then determined to pay you know, pay around £60 or £70 million pounds of what Sport and has been our demand. But till then, we are only willing to pay him around uh, £50 million pounds, uh, for um, his current uh, services. But we need to see vast improvements going on to that midfield. And I think if, if Paul Pobber did leave, obviously, you know, the midfield would look, would look totally imbalanced. It looked static, you know, um, he'd look imbalanced him and all that, you know, we'd lack that creativeness and I think, you know, if Bruno Fernandes came in, you know, he'd had that creativeness in that midfield and he, you know, the midfield would look well balanced him and all that, um, but look at our other midfielders, you know, we've got we've got Matic, he's not getting any younger, you know, he's aging up, he's too slow, he's too ineffective in that midfield. We've got Fred, you know, Fred, obviously, like I said, he's going to join uh, with, a, with a squad when we go to Singapore, I think it's sometime this week. But Fred, I still don't, I don't know if he's a long-term solution for Manchester United. I'm very sceptical about this, to be quite honest with you. You know, Fred did play well towards the back end of last season, he put some good performances in him, you know, we did pay £50 million pounds for him, I think we overpaid for him too, quite honest with you. He did do well at Shakhtar Ness, but he hasn't really replicated this um, at Manchester United. But I still don't know if it's a long-term solution. We've got McTominway, but like I said, a bit too inexperienced um, at the moment. So, yeah, we've definitely know where I got to um, address uh, that midfield, and um, that is a uh, very, very essential um, indeed. But the transfer saga of Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United you know, does continue uh, to persist um, and all that. Um... But other midfielders, uh, of course, uh, that have currently uh, been mentioned, you know, who could, you know, replace uh, Paul Pobb. Obviously, as you all know, there's been, you know, obviously talks, of, well, there was a lot of talks last week about that Malinkvich Savage uh, from Lazio, as you all know. Um, obviously, more than likely, you know, he's going to cost us a substantial amount. You know, Sky in Italy did report out last week saying that we was preparing or we did put a £72 million pound bidding for him. Obviously, he's probably going to be uh, too insufficient uh, for Lazio. I think I think we're only willing to get a deal finalised for Malinkvich Savage, of course, if Paul Pobb does leave uh, the football club. So, pos prob probably, he's more moving to Manchester United is dependent on what, on where, what happens there with Paul Pogba. Um, I do believe Malinkvich Savage is an agent uh, was in the UK uh, the other week uh, so I do believe Manchester United have held talks with him. I do believe also Manchester United um, have been in negotiations there uh, with Lazio. I think Malinkvich Savage's performances have been inconsistent for the last what five to six months but I think he has proven in, uh, in his the majority of his four years with Lazio that he can score goals he can create chances um, and all that. You know he is um, only 24 years of age as Malinkvich Savage um, so he has still got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. He signed a, uh, a new deal last October with them so he's in the contract I think with Lazio um, until 2023 um, is this uh, current uh, player um and I think he's mainly a primarily central midfielder, so mainly a box to box uh, midfielder. Um, is uh, Malinkvich uh, Savage, but I do believe Manchester United have held talks uh, with Lazio. In his four years with well, Lazio, he scored 31 goals in 138 games. Um, but Manchester United have been relentlessly linked with him. I think we was linked with him last summer um, and all that, but I think Lazio said they wanted around £120 million pounds, uh, last summer. So I do believe, you know, we'd then, uh, you know, we've, we've drawn um, our interest um, in the player. But like I said, um, he's a uh, Serbian um, and all that. And he reportedly, a lot of reports said last week, you know, Manchester United uh, were currently um, in for him. So if Paul was 
leave? Do you think, you know, he'd be Emma Coon a good uh, replacement? Um, obviously, there's still uh, talks going on about uh, Sean Longstaff. Not much more is updated about him. Uh, uh, well, from far as I know, um, in the last uh, couple of days, I do believe now we are set to uh, withdraw um, our interest um, in Sean Longstaff following the, you know, what Newcastle are demanding because Newcastle have said, you know, they want around, what, £50 million. Pounds. You know, Newcastle have indicated that he's not uh, for sale. And analysing it, you know, Sean Longstaff, um, he's not really got the experience. He's, he's, I think he's still inexperienced a little bit, me, because um, he's got a bit of experience under his belt, but he only broke into Newcastle's senior squad in December um, of last year. So he did play well in the second half of last season, did Sean Longstaff, and I think he flourished um, under uh, Rafael Benitez's uh, garnish. You know, he put some good performances out um, and all that. Obviously, he signed a new contract with Newcastle um, until 2022. And Ole Gunnar actually instructed Manchester United you know, to get a chance for a priority for them. He, does man he did say the other week, according to Sky, Manchester United held high-level talks uh, with uh, Newcastle and Bar uh, Sean Longstaff. He did reportedly say we haven't put any official bid in. He initially said we was planning to make to submit a around, what, a £30 million pound bid, but I do believe this isn't going to be enough you know, for Newcastle to currently um, offload uh, the current uh, player, because, you know, they've basically said Newcastle you know, they want uh, £50 million. And I thought initially, you know, we'd been given a boost in our pursuit of Sean Longstaff, you know, following the departure of Rafa Benitez. Obviously, you know, looking at it as well, though, Newcastle, you know, did, uh, Newcastle, you know, did uh, currently uh, lose... Um, you know, uh, Pereira's um, as well. So I think Newcastle do know how much of a central player he is. You know, Sean Longstaff, 21. Um, he's primarily a central midfielder, so, you know, mainly a uh, box-to-box. Um, initially began his career with Newcastle, so um, he's a um, product um, of their um, academy. Um, I think he also had loan spells with Kilmarnock um, and Blackpool, um, like I said. Um, but I, think, I still believe he's recovering from injury because, obviously, he sustained a knee ligament injury uh, back um, in March, was it, um, of last season um, and all that. So he didn't play the last couple of months um, last season due to this injury um, he had sustained. And I I do believe um, he's recovering from this uh, knee uh, ligament injury, um, is Sean uh, Longstaff. But I do believe now his proposed move to Manchester United now is currently off because Newcastle have said they want £50 million. And I think, you know, if we paid £50 million, that would be bad business from the club and also a bad business from uh, Ed Woodward because obviously, you know, he's still um, he's still inexperienced at the moment. He's got a bit of experience, but I think he's still a bit um, inexperienced um, at the moment, um, is Sean Longstaff. So he's been another midfielder, um, of course, um, on Manchester United's um, agenda. But like I said, there's been so many uh, midfielders on our agenda. There was also a lot of talks going on the other week um, about Saul Nagiers uh, from Atletico Madrid um, but yeah there's been a hell of a lot of talks you know, currently uh, going on um But like I did say, you know, good news came out earlier the week. You know, Andres Pereira signed a new deal. Um, obviously, you know, um, Tuan Zebe signed a new deal. I thought, again, he was impressive against Perth Glory. Um, obviously, you know, like I said, Rashford signed a new four-year contract the other week, which was very, very good with an option to extend it by a further year. And I think he's set to receive 200 grand a week. Uh, Rashford, uh, including bonuses, I think it'll rise to around 300 grand a week. Um, obviously, you know, like I said, with the hey, he's on the verge of signing new contracts, which is absolutely, you know, fantastic news. Uh, Martial signed a five-year deal back in January at Tommenway got a new long term contract last season Small and Jones got given new long term contracts which, 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 which I did think was bad business uh, for Manchester United Young got um, a new one year um, extension I did initially say we, we, you know, that was a problem the first you know was letting far too many players contracts run down but I do believe now uh, we've, we have resolved uh, that problem you know really really well um we have resolved uh, that problem, you know, really, really well. And we have addressed uh, that current uh, problem, which is uh, very, very good news. One matter as well, got a new contract term a couple of uh, weeks ago. Um... But yeah, so I do believe, um, you know, our expectations going on to this season, you know, probably will be to finish in the top four, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, I do believe in the next couple of seasons, um, our aspirations, you know, will be at that top four. I do believe analysing our current squad at the moment, you know, it isn't good enough, you know, it isn't like competitive enough. So this is why I did say, you know, we need to get uh, at least um, a couple of more players in um, on the board. Um, but I'll say regardless of where our manager is, even, even if we had a manager, you know, to the highest level, you know, a prime example, Guardiola or, you know, Klopp um, and all that, they still struggle with this uh, current uh, Manchester United squad uh, now because it isn't, you know, potentially uh, good enough. And I like to say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to get Manchester United, you know, back to her glory, you know, get us back up there challenging um, and winning as to where, um, of course. And I hope he, exceed, uh, I hope he exceeds um, expectation levels. But I don't think our expectations going into this season, you know, will be to win the league, um, around, because I think we're at least um, a couple of years um, off doing that, as you all know. Um... But yeah, like I said, I, th I think we are moving away from the policy as well. Policy as well as signing them well-established players. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes he's following a policy, you know, that proved uh, successful um, under um, Alex Ferguson. We have been playing catch-up for the last six, five or six years because we have been a toxic club for the last, for the last what, five to six years um, and all that. Um, obviously, you know, we've had different managers with different philosophies, a hell of a lot of money. You know, it has been um, invested um, into the club um, over the years. Um 
But like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I know he's uh, still um, in the process um, of rebuilding and um, hopefully he can take Manchester United forward and he has got a bit of experience as a manager, you know, he did win a couple of Norwegian titles with Mould, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't, he only had a short tenure with Cardiff, didn't really work out for him at Cardiff, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows this club um, inside out, you know, he's a great player for 11 years under Alex Ferguson, he flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance, now I do believe he's following um, Alex Ferguson's philosophy, you know, he also managed a Manchester United reserve team uh, for a couple of uh, years, but the long thing I like about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is, especially in this pre-season, he's going to give everybody the chance, you know, the fringe players, the young players, you know, the experienced players um, and all that, you know, which is um, also, you know, very, very good. Uh, with Sanchez, like I said, with Sanchez, um, is he still injured at the moment? If I might, I haven't really read up about Sanchez lately. For the entire of the summer, you know, we've also been trying to get rid of uh, Sanchez, but the club have found it very difficult to offload him, you know, flexing him as a uh, substantial wages because obviously Sanchez is on, what, 500 grand a week? Well, it's potentially 400 grand a week, but with obviously, um, you know, image rights and bonuses involved in that, uh, obviously it rises up to around 500 grand a week. And I did say, Sanchez's wages are um, having a really bad um, effect um, on the football club but we found it difficult to offload him so I do believe he's going to continue playing his trade with Manchester United uh, going on um, into this season um, and all that um, but yeah that's mainly everything to update you with guys so I just wanted to you know give you the latest news you know of what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that said in his press conference give you the build up to the Manchester United Leeds game uh, tomorrow I do believe it is um, a 12 o'clock kick off like I said it's going to be um, a fantastic uh, game um, and all that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer like I said has given us, uh, uh, some, uh, he's given us some uh, current uh, team news he did say everybody yesterday trained, no one missed their training so 24 outfield players trained uh, plus uh, goalkeepers um, and all that which is good, uh, Lee Grant obviously uh, will not be featuring I don't think because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said he's not fit, Luke Shaw um, we're not too sure about him yet whether he's going to be featuring him or not, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said he may not risk uh, Luke Shaw um, even though I think he's well supposed to be a uh, fit because obviously you know, he was uh, training there uh, yesterday but Bay Lindelof and uh, Romelu Lukaku are going to, I think are all going to be giving their first appearances um, on tour uh, which is uh, very very uh, good and the uh, Haya Obviously, you know, Solskjaer said, um, Solskjaer has basically said, you know, that um, De Gea um, is close to her sign. Um, a new deal is confirmed. De Gea, you know, will be uh, playing her uh, tomorrow, you know, which is uh, very, very good. But all Solskjaer said, he's said a few times he's confident he'll sign a new deal. And he said um, it's up to David and the club uh, to announce uh, this whenever, uh, you know, this is what he's uh, basically said. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing um, as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you again very, very soon.